Uh, Phil Cookson, Creative Resource, is the company that I'm a director of. We have been on for 25 years. It's actually this month, it's 25 years. Uh, we're a creative marketing, digital and PR recruiter. Uh, so I'm going to talk today about how you can go about getting into the industry. For a lot of, a lot of industries, yeah, graduate schemes is the way to go, but if you want to get into the creative industries, the media industry, there's far more small companies that do things ad hoc than have formal grad schemes. So there's a different way that you need to approach it compared to your typical accountancy graduate or law who just, they just know the large firms and they just go straight for the grad schemes. You've got to do things differently in the creative and media sector. And hopefully I'm going to try and give you a bit of insight today as to what you should be doing and how you should be approaching it. So hopefully you get something useful out of what I'm going to say today. So first of all, I'm just going to, if I can do it that way, yeah. So employability, I talked to a number of people I work with, various companies in the Northwest and asked them about graduate employability. What do they like about graduates? What don't they like about graduates? What do you bring and what you don't bring? It's just some examples of some of the companies I've spoke to, ranging from sort of 10 man companies through to sort of 150, uh, real range in size and the feedback was, was really interesting. So what was the feedback and what, what didn't, you know, what, was this, what were they saying about graduates? Uh, a lack of basic business knowledge, first of all, commercial awareness, just understanding that whatever you do in a business, it costs time, time is money, so everything you're doing has a commercial impact. So always think about whenever you go in somewhere, how can you impact on their bottom line? Even if you're there as a, on a placement or you know, you're just starting as a graduate, you know, they're going to be making money off you and they're going to be paying your salary. It needs to balance up and you know, make money for the business at the end of the day. Uh, lack of technical skill set. So any of you technical people, that's massively important. You need to be industry ready when you go in there, whether it's design, whether it's film, you know, production, whatever. You need to be technically ready. So make sure you're constantly honing your skills. You know, don't think, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I can use them. You know, you need to be really, really hot because you'll be going in there and working with people who've been maybe doing it for day in, day out for 20 years. You know, you are, no matter how much you work, you're never going to be as fast as them straight away, but you need to be as close as you can. So always work on your technical skill set. Uh, poor written communication skills is a common one. You know, I know some of you aren't going to be going into jobs where writing or English is, is massively important, but when you're approaching companies and you're looking for that first step in the door, your written communication skills are so important. It says something about you. People want to employ professional people. They don't want somebody who's, who can't write a simple email, who doesn't put any effort in, who doesn't check things. You know, any, anything in the media and the creative sector, attention to detail is really important because often you're producing something that goes out to the wider world. And if it goes out in mistakes, something's going to, you know, somebody's going to pay at the end of the day. So you need to show that you've got a really good attention to detail. Uh, relevant placements is something that I'll talk about further on as well, but you need placement experience as you go along. As much as you can get throughout university, whether it's through university arranging it, whether it's taking a year out, whether it's just going somewhere in the summer or one day a week during your final year, as much experience as you can get, the better. So always try and add something to your CV that isn't you know, just about your degree, so you've got relevant experience. Even if it's working with a, you know, your local uh, nightclub and promoting them or doing a, a website for them or doing some PR for somebody, whatever it is, it's going to add something to your CV. So try and get extra experience where you can. So some of the things, expectations too high regarding salary was, was quite a common one. A lot of people will, you know, have got expectations that salaries are straight away you're going to be on 20k or 22k you're not going to get that as a graduate especially in the northwest salaries are you know are not the most competitive in the creative and media sectors if you're going into law or accountancy or something like that yes you'll get a really high starting salary creative and media you're never going to be a millionaire unfortunately sorry to dash your dreams but unless you really come up with a fantastic idea run your own business you're probably not going to be a millionaire working in the creative and, and media sectors. So just, you know, temper your expectations to start with, get your first job, get your foot in the door, 
and you can earn money further down the line, but you've got to get that first bit of experience first of all, and just get your foot in the door. Uh, expectations too high regarding your job role. Don't go in there expecting you're going to be running things from day one. You'll be making cups of tea, making notes, running errands, dealing with suppliers, whatever it is, you'll be doing the most basic tasks. And the person who's running the company will have done that when they were a graduate. So they will expect you to just smile, get on with things and do whatever's needed. So don't go in there expecting to run before you can walk. You need to learn the basics and you, you've got a good knowledge already from uni, but you'll need to go in there and just prove that you're, you're willing to do you know, things that is basically getting your hands dirty, rolling your sleeves up. Because at some point in the future, you'll be taking a graduate on and you'll say to yourself, well, you know, I need to know what they're doing and I've done it before. So you need to, you know, to go in there knowing that you're going to do a pretty basic role to begin with. So lack of affinity, understanding. So just know what's going on. Whatever sector you're interested in, whatever you want to do, make sure you know what's happening in the sector. What's, you know, what news is, is there? What companies are doing well? What developments are there? Just be on top of what's happening in your sector. And when you go and talk to people, they will want to know how immersed you are in your sector. You know, and you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm really interested in this. And then when they question you, you haven't got an answer. You know, they will dig on it. I remember somebody a couple of years ago saying, yeah, I'm a copywriter, I love, I love writing, it's my passion. And they were asked by a creative director, what was the last book on copywriting you read? Or who are your favorite copywriters? And the girl couldn't answer. So straight away, she didn't go any further with that company. You know, you've got to have answers to the questions that they're going to ask and show that you're interested in the sector. So you can't add enough to a company in a tough climate. We're coming out of that now because the, the, the economy is improving. You know, everything is, is showing signs that the, the creative and media sectors are coming out of the recession. In the recession, creative media is the first thing that gets affected. So it's a bad industry to be in when there's a recession. Things are coming up and uh, now everything's getting better. You know, I'm speaking to loads of people now who are coming from London, who graduated, say, 2008, 2012. They're coming back from London now because they know there's stuff going on in Manchester and Liverpool that's really exciting. And there's not as much need now for you guys to, to move down to London straight away. If you want to, great. There's loads of good opportunities, but there's loads of good stuff in Manchester and Liverpool these days. And there's so much, you know, developing in the next few years it's going to go even bigger. So always think about what you can add to a company though, uh, you know, especially smaller businesses. They need to know that you're going to add something. Uh, poor manners and bad attitudes. So again, just, you know, be polite, be helpful, say please and thank you, do things that are very basic things. But if somebody's giving you experience, especially on a placement, really, you know, make, go out of your way to make sure that you, they know you appreciate it and that you're somebody who's going the extra mile for them because it's more likely that those people on those placements that, that go the extra mile and have the good attitude are the ones that will get snapped up, you know, by that company when you graduate. So it's a, it, it will lead to something if you do things in the right way. So a couple of things to remember, just if you're thinking of going into the agency sector, whatever type of agency it is, most of them are small to medium sized businesses. They cannot carry passengers. So they're small, they've, it's a big investment to hire somebody especially at your level, there's going to be a lot of training, a lot of development that you'll have. So think about how you can make it easy for them. So if you make yourself indispensable to any company, they will want you around. So the biggest advice I can give to you, if you're on a placement somewhere, make it so that they cannot imagine their day-to-day -day life without you being there. And if they can't do that, they will, they'll find a place for you. They'll find the money, they'll find a job for you, and you'll be in, and you'll have your foot in the door. But always think about, like, I've got to make myself indispensable and make sure that they need me here more than, you know, I need them, essentially. So a couple of things on CVs and covering letters. So only include what's going to get the job. So, you know, yes, it's good that you did your Duke of Edinburgh. Yes, it's good that you, you know, have had a job in Morrison since you were 16. It's not going to get you the job that you want in the creative industries. You know, it's include it, but don't go into detail. You know, anybody who's look, reading a CV, who's a director of a company, they know what happens when you serve behind a bar. You don't need to write a paragraph about it. You just need to say that you've had a job and you work there. So just try and keep it, you know, short and sweet to the point and less on your CVs more. Joe, keep it to page if you can. 
if you go over, fine, but you know, we don't want to be reading five page graduate CVs. And believe me, I see a lot of them, five pages, and it's just a waste of time. And you, that sort of CV, you just don't feel like you want to read it as much as someone who's very clearly, I can see the information straight away. So keep it, keep it relevant. So expand on your relevant experience or so placements. I see a lot of people who've had a year's placement and they write three lines on the CV about the placement. Come on, if you've had an, a placement, whether it's a year, whether it's a month, just write more about that than you do about anything else because that's what people are going to look at and say, oh, they've got something interesting here. They've worked for somebody that's in my sector and they've learned something on this placement. So uh, always make reference to the company and role you're interested in. Don't do generic applications. If you send off a generic letter and a generic CV and a generic email, it will get spotted. So make reference. If you're interested in a particular company for a particular reason, tell them why. If you've seen something they've done and you really like it, tell them that you like it. You know, flattery does get you everywhere. It's true. If you flatter companies and tell them how much you like them, how much you like what they do, that makes anybody feel good. So always try and do it with your CV, with your covering letter, and when you talk to them. So uh, and again, be ready to back up what you've written when you get to interview. You know, don't don't pull any porkies on your CV. Be honest, you know, because it will come back to bite you if you say you can do something and you can't. So just be honest on, on what you're saying. So. So social media is, is another thing that I just want to touch on today because compared to like 10 years ago, you guys have got a different experience in terms of how you can interact with companies. Years ago, somebody graduating would have said, right, I'm going to have to get the yellow pages and I'm going to phone every, every company that I'm interested in in the yellow pages. And that was how you had to do it. Now you've got all the brands that you're interested in are available on various networking sites. And if you can identify which companies are of interest to you, you can build a relationship with them while you're here at university. You know, you don't have to wait till you graduate. If you identify companies that do what you're interested in, start talking to them. Start talking to them on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whichever platform they're using and whichever one you get a response from, you can engage with them. So it's very different to what people could do years ago and you can make yourself stand out so that when you do see that they're advertising a job for a graduate and you've been talking to them for 12 months on social media, your name's going to stand out and it will literally, it will be in bright letters when they see your email come in. So always think about how you're going to do that. So show interest in them, talk to them about what they're doing, show your passion, that you're interested in the sector. Uh, again, make yourself a real person. You know, you don't have to talk about work all the time or the industry. If they're talking about X Factor, talk about X Factor. If they're talking about the football, talk about the football. You know, they want to hire a person at the end of the day. And yes, your experience is something and the skills you've got, but they want to hire somebody who they're going to say, yeah, I like working with this person and we've got the same interests. So it does no harm to show yourself off as having interests. Uh, you know, spot opportunities, you'll see placements being advertised on social media. You'll see graduate jobs. You know, there's lots of ways in which you'll see things. And, you know, treat yourself, you know, Treat yourself like a brand, you know, manage your brand. How do you portray yourself on various social channels and make sure you do it in the right way? So things like, you know, the thing at the bottom here, which is interesting, employers check your digital footprint. So there's no, there's no law at the minute in this country that says an employer can't check you out on social media. They don't have to tell you and they don't, they're, they're, not, they're allowed to do it. They cannot discriminate against you based on the normal ones, race, age, sex, etc. So they can't discriminate. But if they see, you know, that you, you're putting certain things on Facebook or certain things on Twitter that don't make you come across in the right way or in the way they'd want somebody to be portraying themselves in, in, their, in their brand or their company, they might make a, a negative impression on you. So be careful about what you're posting. If your Facebook profile is visible, be careful about what you're on there, what pictures are on there. I'd advise just make everything private. Don't let anybody see anything on your Facebook that you don't want, you know, your best, only your best friends should be seeing your stuff on Facebook. Uh, so there's no law against that, so be careful. Uh, and just some of the things about being persistent as well. Sometimes the, the graduates that stand out are the ones that just don't give up. You know, if you identify a company and you're interested in them and you give up after one phone call or one email, somebody else won't. So be persistent, you know, these are busy people. 
you're not going to get food to them straight away. They're not going to respond to you immediately. So you've got to keep going. You've got to keep knocking on the door, email them, phone them, ask them to connect on LinkedIn, engage them on Twitter. There's so many different ways now, but you've got to be persistent and you've got to be the, the person that's still phoning and still emailing after three months if necessary, because eventually they'll give in and they'll go, this person wants it so bad, they must be good. They must be good. They're going to have the right attitude because they want it. So keep going. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Identify, identify a number of companies that are interesting to you. It's dead easy to do. Every company's got a really you know, prominent profile online these days. You can find the companies that are of interest to you. And think about what makes you stand out as well. So I always am a big believer in finding out what's your niche or what's the extra string to your bow that somebody else on your course hasn't got. And everybody's got one. Find out what you're good at, what you're better at than somebody else. And then find out what companies you know, use that skill or use that uh, technical skill. And then focus on those companies. If you can find the right companies, the right brands uh, that match your skills, then that's going to make it a lot easier as well. So again, make tailored approaches uh, and, and networking. So there's loads of networking events that go on in Manchester and Liverpool. Some of them are you know, just talks and presentations. You can go to them. Students are welcome. Not many students go, so you'll stand out like a sore thumb. If you are interested in certain companies, you can stalk them. It's legalised stalking. You can see where those companies are going. You can see they're going to be at this conference on this day in Manchester or this event on Thursday evening in Manchester. If you happen to be at the same event and introduce yourself, well, that's just a happy coincidence as far as I'm concerned. But it's, you know, it's no law against it. It's legalised stalking. And you can do it. You can meet the people that you want to talk to and you know, have a conversation. It's much easier than, than trying to do it through email or phone. You'll get right in front of them straight away. So, so a couple of things just to follow up. Uh, just things that we're, we're doing as a business that you might want to get involved in. Uh, we run employability events usually once or twice a year. The next one's in March. Uh, so basically we try and get as many people from the industry down to these events as possible to give up their time to give you insight into what, uh, what they'll, they'll, they want, what they're looking for. They'll give you one-to-ones. You'll get, if you've got a portfolio, you'll get it reviewed. If you want a CV review, you'll get it. There'll be presentations on a variety of topics and different things going on. And we try and get as many as we can down there. The last one we had, we had about 150 students down there and we had about 25 different companies come down and give up the time. And quite a few people off coming to that event found placements, some of them found jobs, and all of them walked away with a lot more knowledge the, about what the industry's looking for than they had when they started. So there's a lot of different things you can get from that. So that'll be on our social channels, probably at the start of the year. So if anybody wants to collect a business card, you can connect to me on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter and things, and it'll all be on there at the start of the year. It'll probably be in Manchester, uh, but you know it's not too far for you guys, hopefully, to, to come along. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is, is, is basically a, a, a programme called School of Thought. So it's based on an Australian concept called Award School. And this is basically a concept where it's about helping people to uh, generate ideas and become stronger uh, ideas generation. So if you're interested in you know, being able to think more clearly under pressure, being able to generate ideas in whatever sector you're interested in, uh, this could be for you. It's starting in January, it runs for 12 weeks. There's basically 12 different companies have agreed to get involved and we're gonna have 12 students to start with. So competition is gonna be fierce because we expect a few hundred to be interested, but the 12 that get on it will have an experience like you wouldn't get anywhere else. So you'll turn up to a new agency each week hear a talk, you get a brief, two days later you come back with your ideas and you present them. And you present them under pressure, you get critiqued, you'll get, you know, your idea will get torn apart. Uh, one of the rules is no crying, apparently. So, uh, so you will learn how to present with confidence, you'll get idea, learn portfolio of ideas. And basically in Australia, this is used as a way for uh, basically these companies to identify talent and bring them into their businesses. I'd be hugely surprised if the 12 students who get on this course don't all get placements off the back of it and most of them will probably join one of those companies when they graduate. 
So it's a great opportunity. If you think, yeah, I want to be in an ideas-based role, this will help you in terms of developing your skills, in terms of thinking about ideas. Uh, and one thing I haven't got on the, the uh, presentation, but I just want to talk about as well, is the local creative sectors and media sectors. There's, there's so many companies out there. Liverpool and Manchester are booming. There's so many places you can go and find companies. And sometimes there's little like hubs of companies as well, where there's dozens and dozens of creative media companies. And it's very easy to go down there and just walk around and introduce yourself. So in Manchester, you've got the Sharp Project, where there's about 50 different creative digital and media companies down there. And you, you can literally go down there and just walk around knocking on doors, introducing yourself. It's that simple. Uh, it's a great little space, the old Sharp Electronics building. And there's some really creative businesses down there and some really interesting stuff. In Liverpool, you've got Baltic Creative. I don't know if any of you have been down there or heard of it. It's down near the docks. It's old uh, warehouses and buildings and they've been refurbished and it's purely for creative and media businesses. And again, you can walk in. All the, the office spaces, I don't know why, but they're all sheds. So anyway, you can go around knocking on shed doors and there's different companies in each one. And again, you can just meet people and just put yourself out there. And there's all those companies I know at Baltic Creative they're crying out for graduates, they're crying out for staff because they're growing. Liverpool is buzzing as a creative city. There's loads of good things going on and that's where it's all happening. And there's some really good events that go on around Baltic Creative as well. Some good talks and presentations that you can go along to and get into. But there's so much you can do. If you just get into whichever city you prefer or both, there's so many different places you can go and meet uh, the, the creative and you know media businesses that you're interested in. So. You know, have a look, check out Baltic Creative, check out the Sharp Project, you know, and just, you know, go down there, have a look, you know, and, and try and go around knocking on some doors. You know, the worst is you'll just get the door shut in your face, but, you know, just go and do it. You know, you'll meet some really interesting people and hopefully some of those companies might then turn out to be, you know, the right sort of business for you when you, when you graduate. So I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to go through today. Uh, so... Is there any questions? Would anybody like to ask anything in particular? Uh, and I will do my best to answer. No? Okay, that's fine. Well, if, so, my Twitter? Uh, do you want the company one or mine personally? Uh, uh, the company one's spelt funny because it's too many characters, but I think it's uh, CR and then an 8 instead of the EA, and then creative as is, is, is spelt normally, resource at the end. And my personal one's just Phil Cookson, uh, spelt as it is. Anything else? Anybody else? Well, if anybody's got any questions you'd like to come down and speak to me about before, before I leave, you can do. Uh, there's business cards down here. If anybody wants to take a business card, you can email me any questions if you can think of anything afterwards. Connect to me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter, you know, whatever you want to do. But if you want to collect a card, you can do. Uh, like I say, if anybody's got a question, you're more than welcome to come down and ask. So, Okay, thanks.